what's coming out of you. Because what comes out of your mouth reflects your personality, reflects you personally where you're at right now. It shows everything about you. If fear, doubt, anger, falsehoods come out of your mouth, then there is something missing. There's something that's not right in your life. You're missing the peace and the joy of God. We should be speaking about the glory and the praise of God. In a world that is so confused and so misinformed, they are looking and searching for answers. Everybody is hungering for the truth. Except 
for the alphabet and the root. The root word is like three letters. What I did not know was that every letter of the alphabet also corresponds with a number. And from that, every letter corresponds with a pictogram, a picture. And so for millennia, Jewish rabbis and priests have been looking at the numbers of the new year, this is 5782, putting the letters to the numbers, the pictograms to that, and they get an idea of what God is predicting for them for that year. With the reason, it's a general generalization of what they can expect. So we're going to look at what this new year that just started a couple weeks ago, 5782, has in store. And it has been accurate every single year. All right, so the, the, num the Bible has the letters. The top one is uh, a pay, which is our P. And the second one is a bet, which is equal to our B. The pay equals the 80, 5780. And the bet equals the two. So pay also has the pictogram, and it means mouth. Now, I didn't realize until I saw this one slide, it's like, oh, that's how they got the actual letter to look like that. It starts because it's like, I always think of like a, I don't know, upside down G or something. But it starts with the teeth, and it goes up around. It means mouth. So it's the number 80, but it also means mouth. To speak language, whatever we say, whatever comes out of our mouth. Right now, alpha is the very first letter of the, the Hebrew alphabet. It would be equal to our A. But in Hebrew, it's silent. It doesn't have any sound. It takes on whatever vowel is next to it. Last year, which was 5781, was pay, which is 80. And alf, which is silent. So it meant mouth, but it meant silent. Last year was learning to speak and when to listen first. So all last year, it was about keeping quiet. It was about listening. It was about learning. We looked at last week and this week, King Solomon and James have a lot to say about wisdom. What? It comes out of our mouths. And where does that wisdom come from? Last week we said it comes only from God, from the Holy Spirit. What to say, when to say, and when not to say, and when to shut up, and when to zip it. Right? Okay, we're going to move on. So that, I said, is the second letter that would be equal to our B. I want you to think about this. So if alpha also goes with God, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, if alpha is God and alpha is silent, it really does show the attributes of God, doesn't it? Because God, a lot of the time, is silent. How many times have you cried out for an answer? Have you you've prayed out to God wanting something, wanting to know something, and God just seemed Silent. We're going to look at Bet because Bet is the second letter and it represents the sun. You use Bet for Ben, which means son, Bat, which means daughter, Babite, which means house, Bat, which means in or on. Jesus is represented by the second letter, the son of God. So I also want to put this in. It's not the alpha, the first letter of the alphabet that's the first word in the Bible. You know what the first word is? It's very sheep, which starts with bet. So Jesus, bet, which means son, is literally at the beginning. And what does very sheep mean? In the beginning. And what does the Gospel of John tell us at the very beginning? In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. How cool is that? Jesus is literally the first letter of the scriptures. So what are we?
to be speaking. As I said, 5782 is about language this year. We're done with the silent. Now we're supposed to speak. And we're not supposed to speak just about anything, are we? Are we supposed to speak about our fears and our worries and conspiracies? No, no, we're supposed to speak about the Son and fill our mouths with His praise and His glory. Because Luke 6 says, A good man out of the good treasures of his heart springs forth good, and an evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. I'm going to say that again. Now the kids are downstairs learning about the fruits of the Spirit. Did you notice that those scriptures in James parallel the fruits of the Spirit? For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. So what's in your heart? So this is the year the Shemitah is also on. So it's a double bang, so you have the year 5782, but it's also a Shemitah. And a Shemitah is a year of faith. And that's what we looked at. It's a faith because they have to put their trust in God. In Leviticus 25, it says, And if you say, What shall we eat in the seventh year, since we shall not sow or gather in our produce, then I will command my blessings on you in the sixth year. And it will bring forth produce enough for three years. Did you get that? Three years. So God wasn't saying, I'm only going to provide for that seventh year, and then if you have a drought on the first year, tough luck. No, he's letting them know, I'm going to provide enough for you so you can obey me and you don't have to worry about it. So this is what I want to give you is this cool little story about the Kamenut. This is back in the 1950s. And there was a group of Orthodox Jews that decided that they wanted to do this tradition because they hadn't been doing it. And so they took the challenge and they said, on this Shemitah, we are not going to plant anything. So they didn't. And God provided. But then the problem was, for year one after that, they didn't have any seed. And they believed that they couldn't use any seed from that seventh year to plant. So they had to try to find seed from the sixth year. And they could find nothing. Finally, God led them to a bar, a storehouse, that in the back corner, had this old, moldy, icky-looking, dead seed that was stuck in the back when it was from the sixth year. And they felt led by the Spirit, so they asked the farmer, can we buy the seed? He said, are you kidding? You can have that stuff. This is junk. So they took it and they went home. Now, when did I say their new year is? It's in around that Feast of Trumpets, which could be September, October. So they did not plant. All the secular people around and those not observing it started planting in September and October because that's their second, second cycle. And there was a drought. And nothing came up. It all died in the ground. When the new year showed up, year one again, these farmers went out and they planted that old, moldy, icky seed. And the day they got done planting, God burst forth the heavens and rain came down on their fields and it rained and it rained and that seed flourished and it took to sprout and they had an overabundance of crop while everyone else had nothing. God was not only faithful in that seventh year, but he was faithful in the years to follow. Leviticus 25 says, So if you shall observe my statutes and keep my judgments and perform them, and you will dwell in my land in safety, then the land will yield its fruit, and you will eat your fill and dwell there in safety. Now we may go, what? I get the whole providing bit. But what does he mean by safety? How do you get safety by not planting it? Well, this is another really cool story. This wasn't very long ago. 2014, 2015, that year, it was also a shame. So they left the ground, lay out. 
Well, no, that was on, sorry, that was on that next year. So this is year six. This is getting ready. This is going into that feast. And because of the feast, they had to have all the crops out. And the crops had to be out early because the Shemitah happened a little early that year. So they went in and they harvested the whole field, had it all cleaned up. So you know what a wheat field looks like after it's been cleaned. It's pretty short. And this is what happened. Little did they know that 13 terrorists had been hiding out in a culvert under. There was a tunnel. And their plan was they were going to come out of that tunnel and they were going to hide in that wheat field and use that wheat field to get to the town to blow it up. And what happened because they observed God's commandments? <laughs> And harvested the field. The terrorists came out of the tunnel, and guess what? They were caught. <laughs> they had no place to hide. Now, I only threw this slide in here, and this is just, uh, it's kind of hard to read because it's small. It's just some information. It is what it is. But we know that every seventh year, God lets them stuff lay idle, or He cancels it out for every Jubilee. And there's a total cancellation of all debt. Every Shemina, since 1916, because that's just what's recorded here, has had a stock market crash, a bond crash, a global recession, another stock market crash, 9-11, stock market crash. Just saying. We are now the sheep of the new sheep. Which means none of this happens until the very end before it goes into year one. And that end will be in September. Not saying anything, just throwing it up there for thought. So right now we are in difficult times. For a lot of people, they're still in a really deep financial situation because of being laid off, lost work, maybe illness, all the effects of COVID. But see, God has given us an opportunity to put our faith in him. Are we putting our faith in our pension, in our social security, in what we've stored up in our treasure houses? Or are we really putting our faith in God? Because just like that, if it were to all be wiped out tomorrow, who are you going to run to? Are you going to run to the bank first? Or are you going to run to God? Now, none of this applies to us. This does not apply to you and me, because we're Gentiles. It only applies to the Hebrew people. But see, the principle still remains. It's trusting God in the difficult times. Of following him even when it makes no sense. Just like that moldy grain. And following his ways and his commands instead of the ways of this world. See, God is giving us an opportunity to trust him with everything we own. So remind yourself what God has actually done in your life. Did you notice the song we sang right before this? Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your many blessings. See what God has done and what he will continue to do. He's promised it. In order for us to live this kind of faith, we need to watch our mouths. We need to speak it out to others so that they may be blessed by an example. And when you put your trust in God, he blesses you. So let's not speak out of fear or doubt, but of his unfailing love and his faithfulness. So last year, 2021, 5781, was a year about learning to keep quiet, about learning to listen first, to be silent. But now this year is about learning to speak, to speak out about the Son, about Jesus Christ, to spread that gospel. 1580, 57, is also the year of faith where we need to speak differently than the world is speaking. God is speaking, even if we don't hear him. He's speaking right now through his prophets today, through the scriptures, through his word, Jesus Christ. He's speaking through the very alphabet of the Hebrew Bible and through the numbers and through the years in the daily readings. Did you know, just like we have a lectionary, did you know that the Hebrews, from the way back, the Jewish people, from way back, way back, the scrolls are open, and every day 
There is a specific reading that they are to read every day. And it just so happened that when Jesus stood up in that synagogue to kick off his ministry, they asked him to read. And he didn't just randomly pick out a scripture. It was the designated scripture for that day in Isaiah that Jesus proclaimed to them and then said, Today, the scriptures have been fulfilled in your hearing. Nothing is random. So are we listening? I said in 2020, before COVID even hit, God had put on my heart that the, the theme for that year was prepare. Prepare, but it wasn't just preparing for our, our needs, our individual needs. It was preparing for what God was about to do, the people that he was about to bring into our churches, the outpouring of the Spirit that was about to happen. And we were seeing that on the coast, but just not so much in Nebraska. Here's the cool thing. I just had my pastor's meeting with the FCC. And when Chris was talking, this was too cool. He said, I didn't even know this, and I don't know how you not know this, but anyway, we have just had three brand new churches in the FCC start up in Nebraska. Micro-Indonesians who have come over here, and they're working, and they're bringing their friends and their family, and they're working at the baggage plants. They have started three first Christian churches right here in Nebraska. It is booming. India is booming like never before. China, the government has come in, they're taking all the process off of the churches. They are literally changing the scriptures, and it's not for the good. But those Christians, even though their persecution, are being steadfast and their numbers are growing. Afghanistan and the horrid, horrid things that have transpired. More people are coming to Christ right now knowing the persecution that awaits than ever before. The Spirit is outpouring. This is the year of speaking, speaking the gospel of Jesus Christ to all who are willing to hear and who are hungry. So the challenge, I want you to spend some time in prayer. I want you to ask God what word he has for you to speak. And then I want you to ask him to bring your neighbors, your friends, acquaintances, people you've never even met. I want you to ask him to bring those people into your life. Put them right in front of you so that way you can speak the words that God has for them to hear. And I want you to take this year to literally live by faith and then go out and share that, how God was faithful.